When I was a little girl, I grew up in the mountains of Appalachia. Still have a lot of family that lives there today, and it's still very mountainous, rugged, somewhat isolated, but very beautiful. When I was a little girl, a lot of the homes didn't have electricity and didn't have running water and or plumbing. We still got our drinking water from the creek, and we used kerosene lamps. So as you can imagine, there wasn't a lot to do back then. My family was of Scots-Irish descent and English descent. Had a lot of musical people in my family. In fact, Dan Seals is a distant relative of mine. I had a lot of family members who played the dobro, they played the fiddle, they played the banjo. And some of those family members made their own instruments. They couldn't afford to go into what they called town and purchased those instruments, so they made them themselves. It was quite interesting. Anyway, when I was a little girl, we used to go to church, and we would attend what we called singing schools. A lot of the churches back then were poor, and they couldn't afford instruments. We'd have what we call singing schools, and we learned to sing the shape notes, or as they call it today, harp music, or the, what it's sometimes known as is harp music. This was a music that was featured in the movie Cold Mountain, the Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do, the shape notes. And as a very small child, it was very, very easy for me to learn to read these notes. And later on, I taught myself how to play the piano using this musical theory because as a child, it was easier for me to remember these shape notes rather than the lines and spaces that typical musical lessons are based on. Anyway, I wanted to give a quick overview of how I sing song these notes. Maybe I'll have a grandkid one day or a great grandkid that needs to do a school project on Appalachian traditions. Anyway, I'm going to give you a small overview of how we did that. So this is Amazing Grace. It's a universally known song, and it was one of the first songs that we as children, very small children especially, were taught to read the shape notes, or heart music, as some refer to it, to learn new songs. Now, as a child, it was easy to identify the various tones of the musical scale with a shape rather than the lines and spaces that you typically would learn music from in today's world. So the first three notes on Amazing Grace are soul, law, and do. Soul is egg-shaped, law is square, and do is triangle-shaped. That was very easy for me to learn as a child. In fact, as I got older, maybe eight or nine, I started teaching myself how to play the various instruments mainly the piano, based on this shape note theory. It was very easy to transpose, change keys, and it was much simpler and much easier for a child to pick up rather than trying to remember the lines and spaces here. Now, as I got older, I learned the lines and spaces, uh, but I still, when I go to a songbook like this, it's just so much easier for me to do the shape notes rather than doing the lines and spaces. Now, I'm no singer, so don't pay attention to the way I sing, but I'm going to demonstrate just the first line here of how it sounded when we used to sing these out. And the whole church would join in and sing the shape notes or harp music, as some people call it. So the whole congregation would be singing this at one time. And this is how we learned new songs when we got new songbooks. It made it a lot easier when you knew how to read that music. So la do mi do mi Re, do, la, so, so, la, do, mi, do, mi, re, mi, so, and so forth and so on. It kind of sounds like you're singing in a different language, really. Um, and as I said, as I got older, I learned to transfer this theory of shape notes, harp notes, harp music, on to musical scales for instruments. I learned to play various instruments based on this theory. It's a very simple theory, 
But as I said, as a child, it's very easy to associate the shapes with the tones of the uh, music and to apply it to a musical scale. So I was able to learn to play several instruments based on this old mountain theory of harp music, uh, or as we called it, shape notes. Now, um, they do have an annual harp music convention every year in Cades Cove, just outside Pigeon Forge in Maryville here in Tennessee. It's very uh, crowded. Usually a lot of people attend from all over the world, so I've not been able to go to it yet, but I do plan on trying to go to that before I die, that's on my bucket list because some of my fondest childhood memories were growing up in the old mountain church, attending the singing schools and learning the rudiments of music and learning to read music by shape notes or as um, some people call it, the harp music. I still have my grandfather's rudiment book and the one thing we had to learn before we learned anything else in singing schools and if we learned this at the end of the week, the singing school teacher, the usually the old singing school teacher, would give us a piece of candy at the end of the week, and it was this. Music is the science of sound, or rhythmical succession, or a combination of pleasing sounds. We had to learn that by the end of the week, and if we learned it and could recite it in front of the congregation, we got a piece of candy, and that was a big highlight of ours. So this is just another tradition of Appalachian lore, and hopefully one day my grandkids or my great-grandkids will want to do a paper or some kind of research project on the old mountain traditions, and this was one of my fondest memories. Hope you've enjoyed it. Have a great day.